Another blood red sunset and yet another moon face and still another hundred miles to my next resting place Driving down the road eyes on the horizon within my car I'm all alone but feeling good and feeling strong knowing that this path I'm on brings me to I'm driving. Hey now all, I'm Joey C. Welcome back to another episode of Spirit Sherpa. This is the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. With me, as always, is the spirit doctor, Kelly Sparta. Hey Kelly. Hey Joey. How's it going? Oh, it's going good. It's going good. It's um time for us to get back to some Spirit Sherpa work here, and I'm really excited about this one. Oh, good. Because I remember when I was a kid, I would lay in my bed and I would say, okay, I'm going to picture myself on an island or I'm going to picture myself here or there. And this week, we're going to be talking about remote viewing. And I assume it's just as easy as that, right? Pretty much. Oh, no. Really? I I fully expected (laughs) you to say, no, Joey, it's not that easy. (laughs) It's much more difficult. It's really not that much more difficult. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> All right, so let's let's bring everybody else up to speed then. <laughs> what is remote viewing exactly? So remote viewing is where you are in one space and you go and look at things in another space. The CIA actually did a huge amount of research and spent a lot of money training people on how to do this back during the Cold War era in the 50s and 60s. They trained a whole group of people to go and spy on the Russians using remote viewing. Oh, wow. And uh, you can actually see the details of that in a uh, movie called Men Who Stare at Goats. I've heard of that movie before. Yeah, that's based on true fact, man. Is it really? (laughs) It really is. All right. So they trained these people on how to do it. Now, was it to put themselves, their consciousness there, or was it just to be able to see? Because remote viewing, just the name of it says to me, I can see something remotely. I'm not actually putting myself there, but I can see it. Or is it you're putting yourself there? So... Great question. (laughs) And there's a reason why we're doing this episode before we do the astral projection episode, because there's a difference. Okay. It depends on how you look at it. Well, it's not really how you look at it. It is whether you are moving your consciousness or whether you are moving your spirit. And so astral projection is when your spirit leaves your body. Remote viewing is where your consciousness goes out from your body and you by locate. Okay, so you are you are in this case, you are literally taking your consciousness and putting it somewhere else so that you could be in that space as well. Yeah, it's, it's the same process. So if anybody out there has had one of my energy scans, it's the same process I use for my energy scans. I literally send a piece of my awareness out into the other person's energy field. I get their permission mm-hmm. to enter into their energy field. And then I drop into their energy field and I see what's going on in it and tell them, everything that's happening in their field, what's in the aura, what's in the chakras, and how those things are likely playing out. I do that through a process of remote viewing. It's literally sending a tendril of energy out to do that. Now, uh, a lot of what I'm doing there is empathic remote viewing because I'm sending a tendril of energy out to read an emotional field. So I'm going to get a little technical right now. Okay. I think (laughs) that's good. (laughs) I can tell that from the look of your face. You're like, "Uh, what the hell is she talking about? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to get technical. What I'm doing in that state is I'm sending out an empathic energy field. So I'm sending out my emotional context to be able to read with my empathic reading abilities, how that person's energy field is functioning. Okay. Okay. When you do remote viewing for the purposes of like the the spies did in the CIA, where they were going out trying to see what the latest submarine design was or whatever, they would send out their intellectual awareness out to identify as much detail as they possibly could from what they were learning to do. Okay. And they had a 75% success rate. Really? Yeah. Yeah. They got people trained up to to getting 75% of it right. Wow. That yeah, is that super cool. <laughs> yeah. So it seems like to me, one is more sensing and the other is viewing. A really valid way to say it. Okay, yes. cool. So I got to ask you the question, Kelly. Okay. Often we talk about things on Spirit Sherpa, and then we say, but don't do it. 
<laughs> because we're not ready yet. Is this one of those cases where we should be careful with remote viewing? Because you've told us before, and you mentioned astral projection. I know we're going to talk about that in another episode, so I don't want to go there. But you've told us before, this is a dangerous thing to do because you're leaving your body. With remote viewing, is that the case as well? So I'm going to give you a yes and no answer. Oh, good. Um, I know. <laughs> so the process that I described for the energy scan, mm -hmm. I don't recommend that you do that. Okay. Because if somebody else's energy field has any sort of ickies in it, then they can swarm you, you know, the minute you touch into the field and you don't want that. Okay. So I don't recommend doing that before you know how to defend yourself. But the remote viewing, so long as you're viewing into a place that does not have a lot of energetic protections, okay, then I'd say go for it. You're fine. Oh, well, okay? all right. So I wouldn't go remote view into a Masonic lodge. Yeah. Or into any of our governmental structures, because believe it or not, our founding fathers were all Masons. <laughs> and there is a fuck ton of magic that is used <laughs> to protect the U.S. government. And so I would not do it for the U.S. government because okay. that would be unwise. Anything in D.C. generally is a bad idea because D.C.'s got a really badass egregore and you don't want to fuck with the yeah. egregore of D.C. <laughs> but, you know, an average building for an average purpose, sure, knock yourself out. You're not actually actually leaving your body. You're just sending your consciousness out. So your spirit is still in your body. And, you know, are there dangers? Sure. But there's dangers walking across the street too. So, you know, it's that level of, of danger. It's like you look both ways and you don't piss off anything that looks scary, then you'll probably be fine. So we are less likely to blow ourselves up with remote viewing yes. than we are with some other things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I like this. All right. Well, now I'm a kid with a toy here. <laughs> And I got to ask, how does one prepare themselves or look into getting started with remote viewing? The simplest way to do a remote viewing regimen is probably the way to refer to it. So psychic abilities, like anything else, like bodybuilding, okay. right? If, if you're working on a muscle, you've got to work it out mm -hmm. if you want it to get stronger. And psychic abilities are no different. You got to do it. Yep over and over and over again. And you're going to suck at it in the beginning and you'll get better at it over time. Yep. And, you know, some things are your thing and some things are not your thing. Yeah. What I suggest as you're exploring this is, you know, see how you do. If you get absolutely nothing right and you didn't enjoy the process, this is probably not your thing. Okay. But if you got anything right and or you enjoyed the process, then keep doing it and see how good you can get at it. There are two ways to do this. One is you can set yourself up to go to some place that you've never been before. Okay. And then before you go, go out and see if you can get in and see it beforehand. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when you get there, see how well you did. Okay, that's one way. Another way that requires less sending out of your energy requires a partner in crime. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> that is to take a box and put items in a box, have somebody put items in a box and then give the box to you. But the <laughs> challenge with having items in the box is that you don't know whether you are actually remote viewing or whether you're reading the other person's mind. Ah, okay. So is there a difference to go into the next room or into a box versus going across town or even across the country? No. I would assume it's, yeah, okay. I would assume it's not. It's if you could exactly do one, you could same. do the other. Yeah. The space-time continuum doesn't actually exist. So yeah. when we're doing this work, distance doesn't matter. So yeah. it's only about whether or not you can validate what you've seen through some way. If you remote view yourself to Mars, you can never really be sure if what you've seen there is reality versus right. the box you can do some practice with. Exactly. Yeah. And this is one of the biggest challenges that newbies in any sort of spiritual, psychic, whatever, magical construct it's one of the biggest challenges that they have mm -hmm. is you do these things and you think, oh, shit, that worked, right? <laughs> and then you come up with all these rational reasons why it might have been something rational and not something magical, right? Mm -hmm. And you can spend years, you can spend decades in that what I call prove it stage, yeah. right? Are you trying to prove to yourself that it works? Most of the time because we're afraid to get it wrong. And so we don't tell anyone else. And what I will say to you is give yourself permission to get it wrong. Yeah. And when you're do doing this stuff, work with other people and tell them what you see, tell them what you feel, tell them what you've, you've discovered. If you're doing tarot readings, say everything that comes to mind, even if it makes no sense to you. 
and see how much you get right and how much you get wrong. Treat it like an experiment mm -hmm. rather than like a pass fail test. Okay. Okay. Because when you treat it like a pass fail test, you stress yourself out and you limit your ability to receive information. Whereas if you treat it like an experiment, you go, Ooh, okay, I'm just going to say everything that comes to my mind. I'm not even going to care whether or not it's right. I'm not even going to care where it came from. I'm not going to care if I'm making it up. I'm just going to say everything that's come to my mind. Yep. Because otherwise you say things and then you come up with excuses. Mm -hmm. You know, like I would go up and tell everybody at the coffee clutch at, at the spiritualist church that I got additional information for them. And I would tell them things that I had no right to know. And I would say, oh, in my own head, I'm saying that eh, was a logical leap. Yeah. <laughs> and the fact was, <laughs> well, not a logical leap. There was absolutely no reason to know that that was what was going on. There was no hint of that information. And no, it was not a logical leap, but we'll tell ourselves that because we're afraid of our own power. That's why we do it. Mm -hmm. If you get stuck in prove it, it's because of you're afraid of your own power. Yeah. And that's going to be the most limiting thing to your spiritual abilities out of anything. Yeah. And you've told us before with other things that you got to give yourself permission to fail and be wrong, like you said already, um, because yeah. that's the only way to, to get in. And, and is it like, muscle memory at some point. But oh, is totally. It, yeah. Okay. So yeah. It, it's, it's that concept anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, when I first started talking to my guides, I'm like, am I talking to my guides? Or are they talking to me? Or am I making up a conversation in my head? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'm just telling myself what I want to hear, except that oftentimes it wasn't what I wanted to hear, but I pretended it was what I wanted to hear. Or, you know, maybe yeah. I'm just telling myself I have to do something because I know I need to, or, you know, it's all these self-doubt questions. Yeah. And eventually you learn to recognize the difference between your own thoughts and the thoughts of your guides. Yeah. And then it just becomes like somebody else on your phone popping in going, hey, what about this? Yeah. <laughs> and you go, oh, fuck you. I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I spent the first five years of my, my relationship with my guides telling them to fuck off. Because <laughs> I didn't want to do what they wanted me to do. You have told us before, especially around practicing psychic abilities and stuff, is to start, a good way to start is to start with things you have no personal investment in. Yeah. And I'm assuming the same would be true here as well. Absolutely. Yeah. The more emotional investment you have in it, the less you can trust yourself to not make shit up. Okay. I like it. I like it a lot. So we're all going to go out and we're all going to try remote viewing and we're going to stare <laughs> at goats and, uh, and see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't recommend staring at goats, but yes. <laughs> I don't have a goat here. I wish I did sometimes. Well, I didn't know, you know, goat yoga and all the yeah, Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't get it, but whatever. <laughs> if you were to tell people what to do to start, is the answer to that just do it? Not to steal from Nike, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with this, absolutely. Just do it. You know, I think yeah. you said the I mean, same thing to us about fairies. Don't be scared. Yeah. Well, you know, fairies are everywhere and they're pretty cool. Yeah. So just do so, it. You know, there's a lot of them. So yeah, it's a just do it moment. There, there are other things where I'm like, oh no, set a protective circle and make sure you're solid and blah, blah, blah. And you know, would all those things help? Sure. They'd all help. Mm -hmm. Are they necessary? Eh, not really. Not for this. No, not for this. I okay. mean, you're not going that far and, and you're not really doing that much and, and there's not much of you going out. So, you know, again, crossing the street, you could get hit by a bus, but probably not. Right? Oh, I'm excited. So. We don't get many of these episodes where you're like, just go play. I know. Just go play. I know. But this is a play point. <laughs> this is a play point. This is fun and exciting. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I like to tell people that they can play with things and, you know, tarot cards, you can play with crystals. We have learned from some of my students, not so much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, if a crystal talks back to you, don't pick it up. Uh, but, but for the most part, crystals are pretty safe. You know, there's some things that are okay to, to try and, and do uh, unsupervised. Everything else comes with a modicum of risk. And some comes with a lot of risk. And that's what I try and tell you in this podcast is where to get help and where to sort of twiddle and figure it out on your own. And, uh, you know, it's very interesting because uh, I've had a bunch of you calling me recently, which is 
freaking awesome. Yeah. People signing up for the discovery calls. We're actually going to start doing some listener profiles. Awesome. Well, because, you know, everybody's... So for one thing, everyone's asking, who's this Joey guy? We really <laughs> love Joey. Joey's awesome. <laughs> And I realized that, you know, people really love you because one, you're cool. And two, you kind of reflect where they are. Yeah. And so we're actually going to do an episode coming up where we reverse roles reverse and roles. I get to interview you. I know talk that, about your journey. And it's funny. I've told you this um, off the air. I, I'm nervous about that and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that when we when we do that episode. That'll be fun. Yeah. But so the listener and profiles. Yep. And we're also going to do listener profiles. So yeah. Uh, if you would like to be a listener who gets profiled, and when, when I say a listener profile, basically what I mean is we're just going to get you on air and we're going to talk to you about your spiritual journey yeah. and how that's been. And so we're going to start interspersing some of those with some of the other episodes that we do so that you guys can learn from each other's experiences. So for a listener profile, I, I want what you've done, what you've been afraid to do what you did and did well, what you did and screwed up. I actually had a podcast for a while called Magical Muckups, mm -hmm. and I did all four episodes because I discovered it was very hard to get people to tell me where they screwed up <laughs> on, on podcasts. And I was like, but no, you learn so much from other people's screw ups. Come on, share. <laughs> and that turned out to be harder than I thought. But you know, that sort of thing, yeah. what, what's going on. And if you have questions of me, you're welcome to ask questions at that time. I'm happy to answer them. So that's what we're going to talk about on the listener profiles. That's really cool. I'm really, really excited about that. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. And yeah, for, me too. for the folks listening, it's a great chance uh, for you to get your story out there. Everybody wants to hear your story, even if you don't think they do. <laughs> it's right. one thing I've learned in, in doing this podcasting. What we don't know about people is, some, is more often more interesting than what we do know about them. And so that's why Ellen, I think it's fun. Anyone sitting out there going, oh, nobody wants to hear my story. Just know that that was the first thing Joey said to me when I said <laughs> I was going to interview him. <laughs> and this was after people said, tell us more about Joey. <laughs> So you're wow. not alone. How did you knock down the how how about knocking down the wall there, Kelly? Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what wall, babe? <laughs> exactly. There's no wall. No walls. <laughs> there is no wall, only Zool. <laughs> Zool. Um, sorry, I had to throw Ghostbusters, my Ghostbusters reference. Quote in nice. There. <laughs> All right. They can email you if they're interested in doing a profile. And we really encourage you guys to take Kelly up on this. I think this is going to be a lot of fun and you'll get a chance to hang out with us, which is also super cool. Yeah, yeah. super fun. And we do this, we do this remotely. So it doesn't matter where they are. It's not like they right. need to be geographically local to where we are. It could be anywhere, anywhere yeah. in the world. All you need is a computer or a phone with a really good microphone. Yep, exactly. Um, well, a good microphone. A good, yeah, a, any, a usually any microphone. mic. And, uh, I'm working off of a $35 mic right now, so yeah. it doesn't have to be an amazing mic. Yeah, headset or anything like that is, is usually yeah. pretty good for us to do, to do this stuff. Oh, that's exciting. That's going to be a lot yeah. of fun. So the other thing I want to mention is that um, we are running our permanent stress reduction program. Oh, what's that? Remember in the episodes where we've been talking about solidifying your personal container and how important it is to get out of survival mode before you step into solidifying your container? So the solidifying your personal container is the second step, but the first step is getting out of survival mode because when you're in survival mode, there's no way for you to actually make any significant change in your life because you're too busy being defensive. Okay. And permanent stress reduction addresses and solves survival mode. So it's a six week class for $599, which is a great price. And you get three live group coaching calls with one of my students running the calls, my, one of my coaches who's been through the whole system, really good at it. And you get six weeks worth of content that I've created just for you, specifically designed to help get you out of your survival mode process. So we address issues like fear, anxiety, worry, dread, and judgments, inner and outer. Okay. And we also begin to lay the foundation for self-love, which is that combination of things will get you out of survival mode. And that is the first step towards getting solid in yourself and becoming a really good magician if that's what you choose to do. It's very, very cool. So they can go to permanentstressreduction.com. Yes. And that'll link them to a page which is on your site. So they need to right. be a little bit patient as it renders. Yeah. Just, you know, wait a couple seconds for it to render because it's got to forward and then render because it was easier to give you a, a link that was permanentstressreduction.com than something that said kellysparta.com forward slash permanentstressreduction. It was just too hard. So... <laughs> 
I just gave you a link that forwarded, but it means it takes it a minute for, for it to resolve. So please be patient. All right. So there's a lot of good information coming here at the end. We've got the permanent stress reduction class, which people yep. can can take, and that's in permanentstressreduction.com. We've got the listener profiles that we're going to start doing and we want people to email you their interest and we really encourage you to do it but even if you don't want to get on the air which why wouldn't you but even if you didn't (laughs) if you do have any questions or anything because we just talked to you know kelly just gave us a new toy let's not let's not forget that as we roll this episode up we just got a new toy here and you might have some questions about it or you might have some experiences with it that you want to ask kelly about shoot kelly an email and her email for both of those things is kelly K-E-L-L-E at kellysparta.com. Definitely do that. But you also want people getting involved in your mailing list too, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, If you've come to my website in the last six months or so, you will have noticed that there wasn't a way to join my mailing list. Mm -hmm. And it's because I wasn't actually sending out emails. So I wasn't letting people join the list because I didn't want to have them sign up and have it be crickets. So (laughs) um, I have started sending out emails again and I have added the ability to join the mailing list back to the website. So by all means, please join the mailing list. And that way you'll get notices when the next permanent stress reduction program is coming out. You'll get notices about any number of things. I'll, I'll be doing Facebook lives and additional information coming out about different processes and programs along the way. We've actually got a retreat coming up soon that I'm just going to mention, but not actually tell you about. (laughs) You'll get notice of it if you get on the mailing list. (laughs) So go to kellysparta.com and sign up for that mailing list. You mentioned Facebook Live too. It's probably a good time to remind people that they can connect with you on Facebook as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's Kelly Sparta Enterprises is the Facebook page. Excellent. So go there. Kelly does do a lot of Facebook Live stuff and you can get even more information there and more Kelly there. So it's pretty fantastic. Yep. I also have a YouTube channel. No, oh, wow. So you can look me up everywhere except Instagram. I'm well, I have an Instagram account, but I suck at it. So <laughs> if you're a millennial and you like Instagram and you want to tell me how to do it better and easier, or you want to do it for me, that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's that's what's going on there. Excellent. And we're, we've got a lot of really cool stuff coming up in the next year. A lot of really cool retreats, a lot of events, There's a lot of stuff happening that we're going to be rolling out. And so you will want to be on that list. Awesome. Awesome. And with regards to Spirit Sherpa, where we appreciate everybody who's listening and we appreciate um, all the different places. We're starting to see more and more different listening services pop up in our metrics with regards to people going to different places to listen to the podcast. And that's super cool. But if there is somewhere that you you like to listen and you can't find Spirit Tripper there, let us know and we'll make sure. We just recently got on Spotify and and some other, you know, larger platforms which people yep. are listening at. So that's that's fantastic. But wherever you're listening, we do want you to let us know what you think. So rate and leave a comment or a message or wherever it is there. Yeah. And if you love us and you want more people to love us and like that'll keep us actually doing this. Uh, if you want to guarantee that there will be more of these, you know, feel free to post it into the Facebook groups that, that are around spirituality and, you know, like the light workers and things like that. Feel free to share them into, you know, different spiritual groups and uh, share the episodes because that would be really helpful for us as well in gaining more listeners. Absolutely. We want more people to be enlightened as you have been. And we thank you for that. All right. That's all that we have for this week, but be sure to join us next time as Kelly adds yet another chapter into your beginner's guide to energy, magic, and the spirit world. I'm Joey C. here with Kelly Sparta, and you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. So long, everyone. Bye. Each mile I travel over 13,000 now, so I'll leave behind a little fear. Spirit Sherpa is the sole property of Kelly Sparta Enterprises and is distributed under Creative Commons BY-NC-ND 4.0 license. For more information about this licensing, please go to creativecommons.org. Any requests for deviations to this licensing should be sent to K-E-L-L-E at K-E-L-L-E-S-P-A-R-T-A dot com. That's Kelly at kellysparta.com. To sign up or to get more information on the programs, offerings, and services referenced in this episode, please go to kellysparta.com. This episode of Spirit Sherpa has been produced by Honu Voice Productions. Thank you.